So um, uh, this is the first user digest of the 4 o'clock session. Um, I'm Alex Stenson. I, uh, I'm at the Wikimedia Foundation and a longtime uh, volunteer on English Wikipedia before that. Um, I'm currently working on uh, both the Wikimedia Foundation support of GlamWiki and the Wikipedia library programs. Uh, GlamWiki is our outreach to galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And uh, the Wikipedia library is our outreach, uh, our, our, the Wikimedia Foundation's support of communities getting access to research materials when and where they need them. Um, Please make sure to tweet uh, about the presentation, share it around, uh, it, totally worth it. You can also find uh, the presentation at that uh, short Google link, so um, I'll give you a few moments. Um, so I, I've been asked to talk about what verifiability is uh, in, in our community, and I want to take it just a little bit further, not just what it is, but what it means. Um, so in the, the concept of verifiability operates in a very specific way. So I, I, my, my experience is very much colored by English Wikipedia, so I know many other Wikipedias have a, a changed, modified, and moved uh, the way this, this policy on Wikipedias and other Wikimedia projects works. Um, but on English Wikipedia, it, it comes down to a very basic statement. In Wikipedia, verifiability means that anyone using the encyclopedia can check that the information for it, within the encyclopedia comes from a reliable source. Wikipedia does not publish original research. And the rest of the policy goes on to connect this to other kinds of concepts. In practice, this verifiability policy is how we ensure that uh, Wikipedia's content is just not someone's hobby uh, um, theory about the world's information. And it gets implemented on every single Wikipedia page. Um, for example, toilet paper orientation. Uh, kind of a trivial concept, right? Uh, it, people frequently, um, it, 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 like how, which way you put the flap on the toilet paper apparently is quite a debate um, whether you like it on top or below. The under or over strategy. Now this may seem like a trivial concept, uh, but for Wikipedia it's important that we have footnotes talking about this debate. For example, if you really care about being an over uh, the toilet paper orientation person. Yeah, yeah, see. You might doubt those opinions out there of the under people. <laughs> and, you, and in practice, if we didn't have footnotes saying that people have both of these opinions, the talk page on that Wikipedia article would be really heated. And we know it would be really heated because there's a whole body of scholarship <laughs> that cares about, um, uh, about toilet paper or orientation. It's actually, so in sociology, if you do an entry level sociology class, it's very likely that you will talk about toilet paper orientation as a model of learned norms. Uh, and I, I forget the exact sociological concept, and we can recover it here. Um, but the idea is that like toilet paper orientation, it, we learn it from our parents or from habit, and we create opinions about it without actually consciously doing so. So you only learn about this when you get married or move in with your friend, right? Nurture or nature. But what's so paradoxical about this is what these opinions live both in scholarship and in popular discourse. And so on Wikipedia, when we, when we use the concept of verifiability, we tie it back to things like these academic articles that legitimately um, are, are, are reviewed and have scholarly rigor into popular materials like the Huffington Post. Uh, uh, business, which had a opinion piece about this. 
Now, we use footnotes on English Wikipedia to verify this. So in practice, every single sentence on a Wikipedia article that we want to stick. So if you're a, a new editor to Wikipedia, this is one of the secrets to get in your content to stick. You provide a footnote at the end of the sentence. And in practice, experienced Wikipedians rarely add any sentence material on English Wikipedia that does not have a footnote. Except for in the introductory section of the article where that information is tied. This creates a whole narrative our content is, uh, we, you can trust, you can rely on our content because of these footnotes. And this policy comes from a very specific time in the evolution of, of English Wikipedia. Uh, in 2005, 2006, this policy page was first created on English Wikipedia. Just about the same time that in 2006, Jimmy Wales was giving a keynote at Wikimania, so 10 years ago saying, we've, we've filled in all these gaps where someone can just write content that they have common knowledge about. Um, and, and our goal now is to improve quality so that we communicate to uh, these other profession, uh, to other people that like, in fact, our information is reliable. You should come to Wikipedia, you should trust it. And you trust it, the, one of the main strategies most communities developed was trusting it through the footnotes, through verifiability. There are exceptions. German Wikipedia notif notably does not like footnotes very much. Um, and I, if someone's a German Wikipedian, I would love for you to explain exactly why. Um, but, but to me, the footnote has a very scientific scholarship assumption. It assumes that the information that we have in each Wikipedia article is in fact something that can be described by a, a, an expert somewhere. Uh, some, con uh, some basic information like the sky is blue, um, it, or it, 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 that's common experience, is often very hard to verify in this way. Or more complicatedly, if we're in a community like India and there's a popular children's game um, in your particular culture or region, it's often not studied in a way that we can point to a verifiable source. And so Wikipedia, this is kind of our arcane practice, using a footnote. It, it aligns us with a long tradition of academic scholarship that as, makes this assumption, makes this assumption that there is information which can in fact be, or it is verified. It does have connections. Whereas in the humanities, um, and I believe this might be part of why German Wikipedia is the way it is, in the humanities there's a lot more interest in synthesizing different sources and making sure that these sources come together and have a narrative as a group. So Wikipedia is kind of arcane in that way, uh, using our footnotes so thoroughly to solve this problem. And these footnotes are really powerful. So much so that the template on English Wikipedia which says, well, this sentence needs a footnote, it needs a citation, is a meme. <laughs> the public ha has begun using Wikipedia's citation needed concept to, to question political discourse. And um, every once in a while, I, I'm, I'm an American, I, I live in Vermont, so I'm a bit of a Bernie fan, and I've been watching Trump's rhetoric, and every once in a while I see a commenter go, citation needed, right? Um, there is a, it, it, it's, it's highly popular for this concept. And so this whole act of like saying we need more citations and tying them back into the article is, it becomes the center of most Wikipedians' work. And we, we heard uh, the last uh, Digest talk was about medical editing. And for medical editing, they need a certain level of scholarly material that's often controlled by a whole publishing industry. Um, not always, uh, but often, that have paywalls or they, they publish books that they then sell. And for our volunteer community, it's really important to have access to this research material, whether through libraries or through programs like the Wikipedia Library or a partnership with a university where we can actually go behind these paywalls, go behind these things that are, a, are, are hard to access. 
um, and, and use tools to, to find those sources and write the articles. Um, it, it, the, the one particular, uh, the program I worked, have been working on for the past two years is called the Wikipedia Library, where we actually approach these publishers and say, hey, um, please give this access to Wikipedians because they are doing a favor for you. They are pointing at these really highly useful sources and taking the bit that's important for the public and sharing it on Wikipedia. And they're giving a citation to your database. And so there's a real interest in like connecting, making Wikipedia this sum of all human knowledge or the sum of all sources. Um, it, it, having these uh, so citations on every Wikipedia article is an act of hand curating that best piece of research, of reliable material, and attaching it to a concept. And that concept might be toilet paper orientation, or novels, or a list of people who died during consensual sex. All of these are things that Wikipedians like to aggregate topics around. And so the, this act of hand aggregation does things that the academic community would never imagine. We would never imagine having a body of conversation about toilet paper orientation. Um, and if, and in practice, for the community, these footnotes are the things that we build trust from uh, this content. So when we have a citation, we're like, oh, this article has some quality because it's tied back to an expert opinion. But what's fascinating about this is that our readers don't get it. Uh, so all of Wikipedia is based on an assumption that you know, these footnotes verify the content. But if you talk to undergraduates in the United States, this was a, a piece of research published by a librarian in, at Rutgers University. These students saw these footnote, lists of footnotes that were attached to specific statements and had responses like, the second source in this list of statements must be the second best uh, piece of information about this topic. The idea of a foot, footnote is very much like that, that like the sentence and the footnote and the citation tied to it all are connected, is actually a piece of very sophisticated uh, technology and created by the academic community to, to communicate to other scholars. And if you don't have training in that kind of research, you, you're not exposed to footnotes on a regular basis, it, reading that and understanding its meaning is quite complicated. Um, and so libraries the world over are responding to this problem. Uh, there, there's actually a body of scholarship by libraries, about 250 published papers, that talk specifically about Wikipedia literacy, like how do we read Wikipedia to make it useful for our public. And, and their conclusion is often, use the footnotes. Point out the footnotes and bring the students down to evaluating those sources and their relationship to the text. Does, does Wikipedia actually represent what's in that original source well? And this, this also makes Wikipedia, like if librarians like that research strategy, also because it gets people thinking about their collections and about the other kinds of source material that are worth interpreting and aggregating for their own purpose. Um, and so this is quite a complicated problem. And it's a complicated problem because we, we're still operating under assumptions that actually have really powerful um, implications. So a, a couple, uh, three years ago, I, was, I did some research with Adrian Wadowitz, who was one of our um, most active uh, English literature editors in English Wikipedia. And unfortunately, partway through the research, she died during a rock climbing accident. It was a kind of a, a painful uh, experience for our community because she was interested in what it means that we have footnotes in the humanities. So uh, the humanities scholarship, like I said earlier, often assumes that an expert can read all the sources in a, a set of citation or a field and they can synthesize them and provide a narrative that's not associated with the text. But parts, a certain part of the humanities, history research, really likes to know that we've surveyed the whole of that scholarship. So it's interested that we have a citation or we've read all of the works important about a topic. And 
and this survey is called historiography. So we wanted to figure out, does Wikipedia do this historiography thing, this survey of scholarship thing well? And we, we took about 80,000 19th century biography articles uh, collected in 2013 from English Wikipedia, and we looked at how their citations, uh, what their citations contained. And, and one of the things we found is that, in fact, Wikipedia is really good, especially as we start getting towards the community's higher standard of quality articles, is really good at representing both a, a range of sources that are important for the humanities. In this case, they're 19th century biographies, so they want primary sources from the 19th century and secondary and tertiary sources from later scholarship. Um, but it also showed that uh, Wikipedia is really good at finding this current research about these topics and making it visible to the public. And more importantly, Wikipedia, especially featuring good articles, is good at finding all of that scholarship, representing it. This is really important because a lot of the questions that come from experts about Wikipedia is, how am I going to trust it? And, and the, the strategy, especially for people that are experts, is to show them, well, in fact, don't trust us. Trust the consensus of what's happening um, in your field, in your community. And this is in particularly important as we think about outreach to not just experts. So I, as part of my Wikipedia library work, we ran a campaign for Wikipedia's 15th birthday, which asked, what if, imagine a world where every librarian, and there's like at least four or 500,000 librarians in the world, every librarian added one more footnote to Wikipedia. And we didn't get all those librarians, but we did get about, um, we think about 1,000 of them, to show up and add footnotes on English Wikipedia. And, and because librarians, they're trained around retrieving research material. And Wikipedia has become that tool for finding, identifying the right thing to retrieve. And so for a librarian, when we say citation needed, that to them is like the reference question that is part of, that they're trained to answer. That question that someone from the random public wants to figure out, and they know how to guide the public to those sources. And so our campaign is based on that very basic idea. What if every librarian answered a reference question, a citation needed on Wikipedia? And, and this was a really valuable way to tell librarians, hey, we care. Citations are how we care about what your profession values. And, and, and it's a really strong communication strategy. And it actually brought us 29,000 page views on Meta. And if you're familiar with Meta on English, or in our community, Meta gets no traffic. Um, so by socializing this, by sharing it on social media, by asking library associations to imagine this world, they shared it really widely, and it got a whole conversation started. And part of why it got a whole conversation started is because these citations are also a game. When we say citation needed on English Wikipedia, you can actually tell a computer to go say, hey, where is the citation needed statement? Can someone fix it? So if you know anything about InvestCorp, which I don't, there's a citation needed statement somewhere in there a sentence that says they had so much capital during a particular window of time. In this game, Citation Hunt, which you can use, it's actually in six languages, and if you're interested in more languages, I'll, I'll help you make that happen. It, it, this game says, you know, can I do this research? Can I be this contributor? And what's amazing is about the, these small acts of contribution may, uh, kind of traveled through the library community. And so now librarians are using the same instructions, the same game that we provided for One Lib, One Ref, and they're teaching it to freshmen in college. Remember that literacy thing I was talking about just a few minutes ago? They're taking this to freshmen in college and saying, you want to learn research literacy. You want to learn how to use our databases. Let's a answer a reference question that helps the public. And so the reference is a really powerful, really valuable way to get into Wikipedia and to make it, and to actually contribute something that will last, that will matter, that Wikipedians value. There's, there's a little bit more to these references, though. When we have citation data, Every time you put a citation together, you have concepts like author's name, year published, journal, 
title of the work. And these uh, currently in our Wikipedias are, are, are stored in the text. They're, they're just a bit of, just like the sentence that goes before it, they're a bit of free text. And it's quite hard for us to do anything with this stored data. Now with Wikidata, um, which is a really powerful way to, to take these structured things and turn them into accessible things, we can imagine, um, we, we can extract those citations and start placing them in, uh, uh, start evaluating their relationship to Wikipedia articles, or more importantly, we could start doing things like um, seeing which, like if a research article cites other articles, and if we should add that article to a Wikipedia article. You can also imagine, so uh, one of the, a, a conference just a couple months ago by Dario Tabarelli, who has great, um, uh, uh, you can ask questions about if you're interested in Wikidata. Um, they, they experimented with this with Zika virus citations. So now we can visualize like what Zika materials were cited at what time. How can we connect them? Uh, and, and who was responsible for starting that idea in the academic community? But I can imagine a world where also when someone researches, like if the structured data is available and free, and someone researches toilet paper orientation, I can imagine a world where that structured data was behind the algorithm at your local public library when you wanted to learn about toilet paper orientation and it said, hey, Wikipedia thinks these sources are important. You should go check those out. Or there's a good chance that this sociology journal that happens to have a lot of toilet paper orientation uh, citations is the one you want to start researching that topic. So citations are not just, hey, this is how our content's reliable, but they're kind of like a tool for us as a community to, to imagine where our knowledge, where the free com t context that we're pulling together can communicate to others, can show others what it means to have, do Zika research, what it means to participate in Wikipedia, and be the best and worst source of information on the internet. Thank you. And I'm open to questions. I, I, I really like the talk, but what I see Wikipedia is doing is bringing life to some of the discussions in the 30s, particularly with Ludwig Fleck, the um, doctor in, uh, Polish doctor, who started looking at how science be can become more understandable outside all, all the specialities. Mm -hmm. And also with Otto Neurath, who was... Uh, uh, one of the people behind the um, Vienna Circle, and indeed was actually pushing for the um, International Encyc Encyclopedia of Unified Science. He devised protocol sentences which are directly, this is what we are doing when we're adding references. We are saying, this person said this, and you can go and check it yourself, and this is the way scientific knowledge advances, and how scientific uh, what's happening in different scientific communities can start to be woven again together um, despite the, the, the kind of silo mentality. Yeah, and I think Wikisite kind of has the potential to unlock that um, because what we're doing is we're not only taking the citations from Wikipedia or the citations from open access publishers that we could be partners of. We could. We haven't done this yet, but we could. Um, we could aggregate all this material and associate it with like concepts that are described in Wikidata that are attached to Wikipedia articles. And so we could imagine ways in which things that normally wouldn't be connected are connected because of the citations or because 
a journal that happens to publish a lot of authors from Cambridge might have actually uh, had a lot of influence from Cambridge, you know, physicist X, right? That did not publish in that journal. We could imagine ways in which to attach a lot of like humanities and other fields of knowledge to science and back again. And I think that's um, what's really interesting about the wiki site and um, kind of the, the approach to citation data. Uh, and another part of this, um, <laughs> don't want to hit that. Um, another part of our research was looking at exactly those statements too, like the according to historian X. Um, so we, uh, one of the problems I have with the verifiability policy on Wikipedia is it assumes a lot of things, like most science does, it assumes a lot of things are factual and not interpretations. Um, so if you start looking at these citations um, it, it, in it, humanities articles, you also have to look at statements like according to historian X or um, as interpreted by person Y to really understand how like scholarship and how we interpret the past is complicated, right? It's contextual. It's, it's related to being a per particular author writing in a particular journal. Um, and, and increasingly we need, and like featured articles and good articles on English Wikipedia are good at doing this actually. Um, we, we found that much higher frequency of like words that put doubt in the history um, in the article itself. So it deals with this like concept that you should never just trust a source, but you should critically think about it. Um, and I think this is why librarians are so interested in like taking the students from the, f the, the article content down to the footnotes because it allows people to think about the relationship between the things I learn and where that knowledge came from. Who, who that source is or was it an academic journal? Was it, you know, if it's about, uh, it, was it Uncle Joe's website, right? Um, and, and fortunately, like our Wikipedias, as they get more mature, they tend to favor web, uh, materials that are more expert or better representative of knowledge. Or for things that are kind of obscure, which you would never get a historian to write about, we aggregate r mentions of these uh, items in places uh, together that, that librarians or you know, any of the standard processes for like collecting source material um, would never do. Any other questions? Hi, um, thank you so much for this talk. This was fantastic. Uh, I'm, my name's Andrea, and I've been doing kind of similar work for a long time, so I'd like to talk to you afterwards. I particularly am interested in this idea that we have to bring people down to the footnotes. Um, that's an artifact of the ways that scientific papers have been written for centuries. Um, it's very archaic. Sorry? <laughs> it's very archaic. It's well, right. And so there's, uh, you know, I take a socio-technical view of the world where there are the social practices that we have, but there are also the technologies that mediate those practices. And that's a, that's a, a holdover from papers. And we have a totally different medium here. So I would love to think more, exactly, yes, about how could MediaWiki actually surface features of citations and citation lists that could help people be smarter about thinking. Yeah, so the, this liter liter uh, literacy scholarship um, from the libraries makes a lot of recommendations about like giving students rubrics and uh, giving students like questions they should ask of the material. And I think we could, and, and the new readers team at the Wikimedia Foundation is starting to find, it, it, part of the research they're finding is they're starting to see that um, people in like Nigeria and Indo India and Mexico don't have the context of interpreting like how this content was produced, right? So we're actually, by, by not telling people like we get content from footnoted material anywhere in the interface, yeah. um, we, we prevent them from becoming editors uh, because they don't know this is the most valuable thing they could do. So I just actually published last year a study comparing librarians, which I am a librarian and a computer scientist, so full disclosure. Comparing librarians, undergraduates, and Wikipedians in how they look at these things, only the Wikipedians get it. Yeah. I mean, even the librarians were very, they, they just don't really actually We have it. to spoon feed this. Yeah. Um, and I, I ran an experiment 
when I was in the Wikipedia library team where we, uh, for about 10,000 articles, we threw uh, a little question like, are you researching with Wikipedia? Uh, in the references section, and like it's an obscure section, I think like maybe two percent of our readers get down that far, um, and w it, we got fairly high cl click-through rate because people who are researching actually do have questions, even when they get to the footnote section, like what the footnotes are. Um, so I think like we 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 need to think about how footnotes communicate what we're doing. Um, we're, we're this act of aggregating and summing up the sum of all human knowledge, and it needs to be in the design. Yeah, so if I may interject uh, the, the point that uh, um, you were making, Andrea, um, I think there's definitely something big to, uh, for us as a movement to focus, uh, focus on when it comes to design of uh, interfaces. This is something that uh, I feel strongly about, and it's the fact that uh, whether or not people actually uh, look at the references or follow the references, the very presence of that reference as a, a way of supporting a statement uh, in, in Wikipedia is absolutely critical. And, um, and right now, it's extremely hard uh, to have uh, mechanisms, whether human or algorithmic, to actually check if that reference should be there if there are better references. If that reference maybe got retracted uh, 10 years ago, but in fact we're still citing it. So I think there's, a, there's definitely an, an important problem about how we display them, but it's even more fundamental work to do about uh, the selection, the manipulation, the, um, uh, the study and analysis of uh, the actual references that these footnotes uh, surface. And that's where Wikisite uh, I think can be um, a helpful force yeah. That was Dario Tabarelli of research at the foundation. Um, so I think we, one more question, two more? Yeah, so. Oh. So, uh, hi, Martin from German Wikipedia. Um, so maybe one of the problems with footnotes is that they are footnotes and the people have to go to down all the page and see this list which doesn't look really readable to uh, a user who's just searching for information. and. Um, Maybe there's a technical solution just by displaying the footnotes in bubbles. I think there are already ta uh, tools around who do that for people who activate them. Maybe we should um, yeah, ask the VMF, uh, WMF to implement something for the normal reader. Well, yeah, and so English Wikipedia turned on a gadget uh, not too long ago, kind of silently turned on a gadget that actually does this for readers. Um, part of the problem, though, is those footnotes are still out of context, right? It's still, like, the, re the reader does not know that that bits of metadata that are organized in weird formatting, they don't know what it is unless they've read academic material that has citations. So it's, it's, it's a really complicated, like, we need to explain it everywhere. Um, can we get the one more question? I, we're like two minutes over. Okay, last one. Okay, I want to point out that we as Wikipedians really have an opportunity to advance the state of citations. That's because in our templates we include things like ISBN, OCLC numbers, which for those of you who don't know, will give you the closest library where you can find a printed source. We can put in subscription required that will tell you whether it's a closed source. Um, we have two problems with uh, that. One is, you know, how do we store that data? Of course, Wikidata is the obvious solution. The other problem is, how do we display that in a uh, compact way? Because we don't want to put, like, necessarily OCLC, subscription required, et cetera, et cetera. But we have tools that would enable us for a user to click on that and then display the information either pop up or another so, another way. Yeah, and, and I want to say thank you uh, for all the great questions. And I think this is something we need to, like some of our communities do not want to spend time thinking about literacy. Um, and there is resistance. And I think we need to have those conversations and we need to have them systematically and repetitively. Um, so let's, uh, more citations. Thank <laughs> you.